Hi, I'm Gary Piller. I teach at Georgetown University Law Center, and I'm a member of the critical race theory movement and a former member of the critical legal studies movement. I want to talk today about what I've learned as in elite education. I feel a little bit like I'm an emissary. I can I want to talk about the what I think are the most important things that I've been uh, exposed to having been one of the few from the outside I'll just that's the way I think of it allowed to uh, allowed to actually attend the uh, elite educational institutions George I teach at Georgetown I went to Harvard etc so I want to talk about what I learned when I started out my image of knowledge was like knowledge was a thing something substantial that was kind of collected physically I thought of it's a kind of old reference now the card catalog where they kept kept uh, kept entries a physical entries a card for each book ever ever printed as the repo the physical repository of all knowledge and I thought that the problem of fairness and equity in education was that not enough people had access to that knowledge that it needed to be distributed more fairly so you didn't have to just be an elite get a high score on, on some test in order to get exposed to this knowledge. Now, of course, this is before the, the dem democratization of knowledge by Google. So bear with me. Because the point, I, the point I make, I think, is still applicable. And that is, I think that the very most important thing I've learned, and I want to share with those, as I said, who may not have the opportunity to attend the elite institutions of higher learning, the most important thing is that there is no such thing called knowledge that stands apart from power, from politics, from history. It's a myth. It's a myth a lot of us have been oriented toward. Our goal as good people has been to replace ignorance with knowledge. That's been the whole orientation of, of liberals in the world. And what I've learned is that knowledge is not something that's just there to be discovered, but it's constructed and created. And what gets called knowledge, as opposed to what gets called superstition or opinion, is a function of power, of the power of some to say, this counts as knowledge and this doesn't. My grandmother had knowledge of what her working life was like in the sweatshops of Brooklyn. She had knowledge of what it was like to live in the shtetls of Europe. Her knowledge doesn't count as knowledge in the liberal epistemological tests. It's folk wisdom or superstition or opinion. And so somehow what the elite institutions of education have taught their students to do is to displace the knowledge of my grandmother, of families, with the knowledge of an objective form of thinking shorn of experience, shorn of history. It's a test we should reject. And why is this important? Because to me, my quest for what I'll continue to call knowledge has been oriented since I was a little boy around the following question. It's in the interest of most people to transform the society in which we live, to redistribute the money, to redistribute property, to change the rules. So why don't we all rise up together and change our world? What is stopping us? When I come to work and get off the train at Union Station and leave the escalator, the first thing I do, like thousands of other commuters into DC, is to step over homeless people. The stepping over the homeless person requires a certain kind of mindset, a certain kind of existential hardening, a distancing, a narrative that we can all tell ourselves, this doesn't involve me. It's a narrative 
oh, this person might be insane. A narrative, perhaps they're choosing to live this way. A narrative that serves to distance us from the pain of our fellow human beings, to distance us ultimately from each other. And so, so my quest as a scholar in the, in, in the movements of critical race theory and critical legal studies has been to try to identify and break down those belief systems that have hardened and now pass as forms of knowledge, as what goes without saying, what t- gets taken for granted, that allows us all together to step over those of us in pain, our fellow human beings, and to tell ourselves some story to make the day be okay. I hope I've communicated with you, those who may not get the opportunity to walk the hallowed halls of elite education, that what the elites, what the elites have is the knowledge that knowledge is a construct that it's constructed. Thanks for listening.